All right, I'm fixing to get started making the uh, rocket stove out of this propane tank. I've already got the valve removed, and I did that by uh, shoving a bar through this, and then hooking onto the valve with a pipe wrench, and using the metal bar here to hold the tank, and the pipe wrench to unscrew it. Now, I already said in my last video that I don't recommend you doing this unless you're 100% certain you know what you're doing. So I'll say it again. Uh, I take no responsibility if you should decide to try to pull a valve off a propane tank. Uh, you certainly want to make sure it's empty before you do anything, especially concerning making sparks around it. And uh, if you should do this and get the valve off, the way I purged the tank was to fill it up with water. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove this ring on the bottom. It's got some spot welds, three spot welds that hold it on. And uh, let's see here. What I'm going to do is uh, cut on either side. Here we are. I'm going to cut on either side of the spot welds and then take my angle grinder and try to knock the welds off with my angle grinder and smooth it out. This is going to be the bottom of the stove. And uh, I want this to look really nice, so I'm going to go to uh, greater lengths to uh, make my weld a little nicer and uh, to clean up spots like that that I'm going to be cutting off. Okay, uh, I'm going to get started on that. Okay, I was able to uh, cut through the welds with uh, my little cutoff wheel that's on my uh, battery powered DeWalt angle grinder. I got it off and now I'm going to take my, uh, ang my angle grinder with a grinding wheel on it and I just touch these little uh, spot welds up a little bit and make it look a little nicer. You get the idea. Okay, I've got that all grounded down and uh, I went ahead and where the ring had touched the bottom of this there was uh, some rust pits so I went ahead and grounded wherever the ring was just to uh, make it look a little nicer. And, uh, boy this is some thick paint on here so it must have been powder coated. Uh, I'm going to go back with white just because it's already white and it's got a nice powder coating over it. All right, my next, uh, what I'm gonna do next is, uh, hold on. I gotta score a line around, or, or make a line or, uh, around the uh, top of this where I'm going to cut the top off. I'm not gonna be using this top like I did in my Freon bottle videos, rocket stove videos. Uh, I have a piece of plate steel that I'm gonna be using for the top of this, so if this can be discarded, I really have no use for it. So uh, that's my next video. I'm going to score a line all the way around this, real even, and uh, cut it off. I believe it's not so thick that I can't cut it with my jigsaw. If it is too thick, <clears throat> then I'm going to use my cutoff wheel because I need a really smooth cut and a cutting torch just uh, would leave too much slag. I am in the process of uh, saving for a plasma cutter and uh, man, when I get that, that's going to open up a a whole new world of uh, opportunity as far as cutting nice clean cuts and uh, Tractor Supply has got one for 800 bucks and I'm going to start saving so uh, that's my next I'm going to make that line and uh, start cutting I just wanted to show you the little jig I made let me uh, yeah let me bring this in a little bit I made that jig just so I can score a straight line around the upper edge. It's just some scrap lumber I had laying around. And uh, I'll show you what I got right there. There we go. Just uh, 
Now, I, I do need a little help. I'm going to get my wife out here and have her hold that jig real steady while I turn the propane tank, or uh, maybe vice versa. I'll hold the propane, propane tank real steady and uh, turn that jig around it. We'll see. I just wanted to show you my little homemade jig. Well, it turns out I didn't need help. <laughs> well, I guess I did. <laughs> anyway, I, I got that line marked. I just uh, stood the tank up on in there and drove that thing around it. Uh, I'm going to get my cutter out and go to cut. Well, that's a nice smooth cut and uh, I'm really glad I used that cutoff wheel. I don't think my jigsaw would have made this perfectly cut. Here I'll uh, zoom you in here. That's going to be really easy to weld. This is uh, the edge that I cut off. Pretty smooth. Alright, now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to work on the legs. I'm going to do the bottom first, get the bottom done with the legs. And then I'll stand it up and I'll get my top. I got a piece of uh, plate steel over there that I'm going to be using. Alright, I'm going to do the legs next. I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to show you how I cut the angle on these legs and uh, I can't tell you what angle it is because I'm terrible at math and uh, that's a bit hard to admit but math is one of my weakest subjects and uh, I don't know angles and that kind of thing. A lot of times I just eyeball things and uh, this is really embarrassing. I don't even have a high school diploma. And the only reason I'm telling you this is because I want, if there's any kids that stumble across this, I just want you to know what a disadvantage you're at not knowing math. Math is one, one of the things that you will use every single day of your life. And uh, if you're thinking about dropping out or if you're doing terrible in math, do whatever it takes to understand math because not a day will go by that you don't need to use math somehow in your daily life. Well, anyway. Let me show you how I got this angle and what I'm doing to get the angle. And uh, all I did was eyeball this. Hold on. Why won't you zoom? There we go. Uh, to begin with, this piece here is 16 inches long. I marked the center. I'm uh, bringing it a little more. Uh, I marked the center, the 8 inch mark. And this is one inch wide, so I marked a half inch to get the center of that. And then I took my square and I put the one inch mark right on the center tick, right there. And I got the two inch mark on the end. And, and of course, zero would be right, right here. And uh, that's and I'm only doing this angle because just eyeballing it, that looks like about the angle I want. I don't want a 45. Uh, so I'm going to start with that and then when I weld it on, when I get this welded on, what I'll do is hold something square against uh, the base of the leg and, and make these flush with whatever, you know, the table I'll be setting this on. So that's my way around my weakness of, uh, of math. All right, I'm going to cut these and I'm going to weld them on and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I've got these uh, four legs cut out. And what I'm going to do is measure the uh, circumference of this and divide it by four. And uh, that's how I'm going to figure out where to weld my legs on. I think I'm going to... Uh, cut my hole for the pipe in the side before I do that. And let me show you one other dilemma that I have. Uh, I have to make a decision. See, i got to get the, the inner pipe with the combustion chamber uh, down in here and then out the, the side here. Hold on. Hit the wrong button. Sorry. Wrong button again. There we go. Okay. You know, the, uh, the feed tube for the wood is going in the side and then the combustion chamber will come up through the middle and be flush with the top. 
Well, I have, uh, have to make a decision on whether I want to make uh, this, this inside diameter here will be as long as I can make the food, feed tube, which uh, may not be bad. I'd like to make it a little longer. And if I do, what I'm going to do is cut the hole here a little bit bigger at the top. We're looking at this upside down now. I'll cut my hole a little, a little bit bigger at the top, bend it out, put my pipe in there, bend it back, and then weld it and grind it flush. I'm not sure what I'm going to get. I'm going to measure this and get a look at how long the feed tube is going to be, and that just might be enough. So, uh, but first, I'm going to I got to go out and get that other pipe and bring it in and uh, and have a look at that. Okay, I got my the chimney and uh, the bottom portion, the loading portion of it cut. But before I put it in here, I wanted to be sure that it would fit down inside and it was real tight. So what I did was I sort of rounded, I knocked the corners off to go, uh, to go along with the curvature of the tank. And it just, with some wiggling you can get in here. Alright, I've got my leg positions marked out and uh, I'm fixing to get the welding. I'm going to weld this together, I'm going to weld my legs on, I'm going to get the chimney mounted in here and uh, I'll show you that in a second. I got one more leg to weld on and since I can't weld through paint what I'm having to do is just to get this weld started, I grind, grind a little bit of this paint off. Watch your volume. Alright. I'm going to tack this weld on. So uh, here's a little gratuitous welding footage. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I don't know if I'll be in the way. I'll try to stay out of the way. You see that? No, you can't. Oh well. But it's too late now. I'm just going to tap it. Alright. How's that for a weld, huh? I'm getting better. Alright, I'm going to turn it over, see how square this is. Okay, it wiggled just a tad, and I took my grinder and just knocked a little bit off of two of the legs, and it's square now. What I'm going to do is lower that chimney down in there. Remember I curved the front edge a little bit to coincide with the curvature of the tank, but I also hit, put this on the grinder and knock the, the corner off of that too. Maybe it'll go in without me struggling. Oh yeah. Well, oh yeah, that's, that's good. Huh, I'll be darned. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, I've got the top already cut into a circle. But what I don't have is the uh, square uh, cut in the top so it'll fit over this. And then uh, when I get that top on, I'm going to cut this pipe off level with it. Man, this is coming along pretty good. Uh, when I get this top cut, be right back. When I get the top cut, I fill it up with some vermiculite. I think I got enough. Yeah, I still got enough. And uh, man, we'll be cooking here in just a little while. I'm going to hit it with some barbecue black because they do not make barbecue white. So uh, I'll paint it and tomorrow I'll cook on it. See ya. Okay, uh, pretty much done except for I got to put the vermiculite in here. 
I've got my top, and I'm going to show you that in a second, and as soon as I put my vermiculite in. So uh, let's do that, and I'll lay the top on here, and I'll show you what it looks like. Hope I got enough. I buy this. Oh, uh, while I'm doing this, let me tell you. Huh. Uh, man, <laughs> I just made a mess. This pipe, both both the uh, bottom pipe and top pipe, is uh, three and a half square. The uh, propane tank is exactly 12 inches. Oh yeah, this is really good. <laughs> I have to sweep that up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. If I don't, I'll sweep up what I spill and use that. sweep up what I spilled down there and put it in here and uh, that'll be enough. And here's what the top is going to look like. Can you see that? Let me, let me zoom you in here. Okay, uh, I'm going to weld this cut this off the, even with the top of the plate here and then I'm going to go around underneath and weld all around the edge of this hit it with some black spray paint and uh, oh yeah I gotta make a floor plate for in here and what that is it holds the sticks up off the bottom of the uh, combustion chamber because what you want is the air to go in under the sticks and come up in the front of them which would be in the very front of this burn chamber down here and uh, that is what creates the wood gas and that's what gives it the rocket effect and when I start this up I'm going to try to hold the camera real close so you can hear the difference between when it starts it just it's just a crackling fire with smoke and when it finally heats the combustion chamber up high enough where the uh, gases in the wood are released and start igniting, you can actually hear a rocket sound. I don't know if that's why they call it a rocket stove, but uh, it's definitely, uh, it's and it's all of a sudden, it'll be within a couple of seconds, it'll go from a regular crackling fire to a whooshing sound when the gases start burning. And that happens after the combustion chamber gets uh, high enough in temperature to create those gases. And uh, also, the uh, there's no smoke the smoke disappears because it's a complete and total burn and when you've cooked on this and you remove the sticks that you don't need to cook with anymore there's barely any ashes in there because it is it burns so thoroughly okay uh, I'm gonna finish this up and uh, hit it with some paint I'll probably show you one last clip of what this looks all all finished up and uh, at that time I'm gonna tell you who my uh, rocket stove mentor guru is and give a couple of channel shout outs and I want to tell you now in case I forget later that uh, I'm going to have three channels featured on my channel and you should really check them out one of them is a guy called Subtac S-U-B-T-A-C and he's got a lot of useful information on his channel uh, the other channel is JWWM2 uh, he's got some useful information on his channel very interesting channel and the third one, which is the guy that I uh, basically learned what I know about rocket stoves from him and his channel, and that's K.B. Bacon, or it might be K. Bacon, but I'll, I'll have his channel featured on mine. So uh, I'm going to finish this up and show you what it looks like. Hey, I just wanted to show you this one last thing that I forgot to mention, and that is uh, the floor plate for the combustion chamber. And what that does is elevate the wood a little bit so the air comes in underneath this. The air comes in underneath this 
and uh, it doesn't go over the top of the wood, the air I'm talking about. It's in there like that. And you lay your wood on top. And uh, when it starts burning like a rocket stove, after the uh, combustion chamber heats up, uh, and you can definitely hear the air getting sucked in underneath there. All right, I'm fixing to paint this and we are done. Let me give you a wide shot. Okay, I'll paint it, show it to you, and uh, I'm going to put this video up. See you. Thanks for watching. There we go. Okay, tomorrow, tomorrow we cook. See you then. Okay, I've got this stove uh, started. I'm going to let it heat up. And, uh, one second. I'm going to let it heat up, and then I want to do the uh, boiling test that I usually do with my rocket stoves. Just uh, two quarts of water in a coffee can. And once this gets going, uh, I'm going to try that, see how long it takes to boil a uh, half a gallon of water. And then I'm going to cook some chicken strips. And uh, I kind of got an idea, you know, there's, there's a real problem. People use these stoves, their pots get really black on the bottom. And it's kind of hard to clean them. And what I'm going to do is put some tin foil on the bottom of my fry pan and see if that will prevent the uh, you know if I can cook with it number one and number two if I can just ball that tin foil up and throw it away it might not uh, blacken my fry pan so much but uh, when this thing gets hot enough and I start boiling water I'll start the timer Alright, it's 1022. I'm fixing to set this water on there. And uh, whoop, see how long it takes to boil. Man, you really gotta watch these sticks. The blood burns pretty quick. Happy birthday! Thank you. Today's my birthday. Alright, it's 1025, and uh, we already got some bubbles. I'm gonna take you over there. See if I can. Leave you on the tripod there. Already got bubbles, three minutes. Are you getting seasick? Seven minutes. I, I would guess in a couple of minutes this thing will be boiling. All right, full rolling boil, eight minutes. Eight minutes exactly. That's pretty good to know you can boil a half a gallon of water. Hey, y'all. Yeah, hey. Quit. Good Lord. Uh, half a gallon of water, you can boil it in a half, uh, eight minutes. That's pretty comforting to know you can purify water that quick with just a few sticks. All right, I'm going to dump this out. And uh, while I got it going, I'm going to put some tin foil on the bottom of my pan and start frying my chicken tenders. I just wanted to show you what I'm doing with my fry pan here. I'm not certain it'll work, but if it does, that'll sure eliminate all that cleaning up that black stuff that gets on the bottom of it. It'd be nice if it would work. That'd solve a real... There's a lot of people that don't want to cook on these rocket stoves uh, because it, it is kind of messy. Alright, I'm going to go put a little grease in there, get my chicken tenders ready. I don't know if it's hot enough yet, but we're fixing to see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy that's going to be good. One more. Well, I think I have room for one more. There we go. 
All right. Oh, let me tell you what I'm getting for my birthday. Tractor Supply has layaway. I didn't know that till yesterday. And uh, I went and put a plasma cutter on layaway. They got a 90 day layaway. I had no idea. And they got their plasma cutters on sale right now. So my uh, wife told me to go ahead and put it on layaway since we didn't want to miss out on the 80 bucks off. The one I'm getting is a 250CI if you want to have a look at it. I should have it in a couple of months. All right, I'm gonna let that cook a minute. See ya. There's a close up of the grease bubbling. Well, I'll tell you what, every time I cook on one of these, I'm just amazed at how little wood you gotta use to get uh, such a hot, hot fire. Oh, by the way, that plasma cutter was a Hobart. I forgot to mention that. Hobart 250CI. All right, I'll flip these over here in about two seconds. Alright, time to flip the last batch of chicken tenders over. Alright, a couple minutes we'll be eating. Alright, we're done. Uh, I peeled the tinfoil off of this thing and it's still hot. I don't have to be careful lifting it no black that's great well that's that worked out good just wrap a little tin fold around it curl it over the edge there and uh, save your pan now that pan can get washed in the sink without making a huge mess alright I'm fixing to eat thanks for watching